Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Chris Legaspi, and today we are doing another live stream from our brand new Discord community. Really appreciate you being here. Today's topic will be um, shape drawing. I'm just going to do a, basically a technique breakdown of how I look at shapes and draw with shapes. And before we begin, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my free Insiders Club. Insiders Club members get first access to these weekly live streams. And you also get access to other live events. And you get discounts on courses and programs, along with access to free lessons and other free content available only to subscribers. So all you have to do is go to www drawwithchris.com and there you can enter your email and you'll be good to go. Okay, so if you're watching live today or if you're watching on replay, comment in the stream room chat or comment below. Where are you located? Where are you watching from? What time is it for you? I am currently in Thailand and it's nine in the morning for me. But thank you for being here wherever you are. All right, so now we're going to talk about the topic of shape. Now, there's lots of ways to look at a look at a subject to start a drawing, but for me, there's basically three things that I um, I pay attention to. There's three specific shapes that are important to me. And those three shapes are number one, Sorry. <laughs> Ships. Number one is contour. Number two is um, planes. Number three are value shapes. Value shapes. SH means shapes. So, contour, also known as silhouette, outline. Planes, we all know planes. Planes are flat surfaces, right? And value shapes. So, contour is interesting because contour can mean several things. So we all know contour, right? The outer shape of things is very important. And those who have taken my classes, <laughs> right, or maybe you're in one of my programs or taken a class with me or read my book, you know, you you already know this. I uh, this is this is a cornerstone of of, it's not my philosophy. This is realism. This is a cornerstone of realism. We have to get this right. We all know that. But we also have to get right, right? If we want to add realism and detail to our drawing, we have to understand that every little thing also has a contour, has an outline, has a silhouette. What do I mean by that? Well, for example... The eyes, <laughs> right? The eyes and the eyelids have their own kind of shape. The nose has its own contour. We know that. Um, the, the lips have their own contour. The hair, you know, the hair has its own contour. We can group the hair and draw the hair as a big shape. The, this little bulge of his forehead, that little thing is its own creature, has its own shape, its own form. Right? Your eyebrows, if this was a real person, your eyebrows would have its own shape. Your chin is a bumpy form, has its own shape. Your jaw, your cheek, right? Your ear. Every little piece that we do need to describe and draw has its own thing. So that's, that is a, um, it's, it's kind of good and bad. 
it's bad because it's more work for us. If you're a realist, that's way more work <laughs> to do. It's it's um, it's um, it's good because it also allows us more opportunities to design. And to me, contour really is about the shape is for me an opportunity to make an interesting composition, a design. So we can create an uh, uh, an overall design, and then we can create design within our composition. So uh, that's one one way I look at it. Contour, in a lot of ways, is king. I always say shape is king, and of of shape, the contour is the most important shape. So contour is king. All right, next, let's talk about planes. So we all know planes. We all know planes. We know that once we have our shape, we know we know we we're, we are in pretty good shape. But we know that again, as realists, we want that three D effect, right? We want the thing to pop off the paper. We want it to feel three dimensional and round. So we're going to need the sides, right? The contour, which is the outer edge, and we're going to need the internal contour. Uh, Steve Houston calls it the the box model. You know, we're going to need that internal idea, and that's where planes come in. So, if you're watching at home, if you're watching live on replay, pop quiz: What is the most important plane, in my opinion, on the face? Comment below. I think many of you know the answer. Of course, we know it's the side plane. We need to separate side from front. And because of this beautiful lighting on our sculpture here of um, Agrippa, uh, the Roman sculpture, I believe, we know that this side plane is one of our bread and butter planes. We cannot... We cannot have a good drawing unless this plane is very clear. What's next? We all know the plane of the eyes. The plane of the eyes, the eye socket. What else? We know the nose has a plane too. Nose is like a box. It's like, I call it a door stopper. It has a top side. Two sides and a bottom. The lips are planes. Top lip has a underplane. Bottom lip has a top plane and underplane. The chin has a plane. Underside of your face has a plane. So these are the obvious. Your ear, top, your ear has a top plane, side plane. Your neck is a cylinder. But cylinder, we can box just like your head is an egg. Cylinder has a front and a side. Even from the top, we know that the hairline represents the, the plane, the intersection of the front plane of your face, your forehead, and the top plane, the beginning of your top plane, which is your your crown, the top of your head, and then, you know, you could subdivide these and things like that, you know, your brow has a subtle top plane, you know what I mean? So we can, we could we can chop, chop this up as much as we want, but the most important thing to understand is that we cannot get this effect, the 3D effect that we all want without the plane. And to me, when I look at a drawing, especially one that had nice, nice lighting like this, I go, okay, where is my plane separation? Where's my front? Where's my side? Where's my brow? Top plane, the brow, under plane of the socket. So I'm always looking at the plane. And to me, it's really just a, a design shape based on what the architecture of the subject Right, these planes are unique to this subject in this lighting also as well. 
Okay, the last important shapes are value shapes. So th this value shape I just quickly did in Photoshop with a filter. So they're not 100% accurate, but it's it's clear enough to demonstrate what what we're after here. And um, for me, the most important value shape is the overall uh, what what's called the two value pattern. What's generally the light facing things of the face or the form and what's generally the shadow thing the shadow facing which becomes a shadow shape so in this case we can see that it's clearly this uh, two-dimensional little dark thing here i'm going to outline it here this little entity this little creature what does this work here Right, we can all see that. And because it's um, the lighting is very nice here, all of these shadow shapes kind of group together really nicely. So that's the first value shape I look for. And then the second one is I look for the light shapes and the highlight shapes, what's really bright. And it's not so clear here, but in the reference, you could see like the brightest area will be here uh, in the nose, also some of his body. But I would say it's roughly this little bump on his forehead. Um, but because also his local color, right, or its local color, this is a plaster sculpture. So the local color is already very bright. Notice that the lights group quite nicely into this big mass. So in this subject, this light-colored object, light-colored plaster sculpture, the lights and highlights kind of group into a big mass. Of course, we can separate them and add subtlety later, right? If we want, we could do this. We could do something like that. So those of you who may see my drawings or other poster artists, uh, like Drew Struzan does this quite a bit. Even guys like uh, Rockwell and Leyendecker, they do that to some extent. you'll see them outline like this. And what they're doing is like, okay, they're just saying, hey, um, there's going to be a very bright value shape here. That's all they're doing. So that's what I'm doing here. And then, um, so I got my initial two-value pattern, what's light, what's dark. Now, I, now I'm refining that and going, okay, what's within the light, what's really bright? So I got that. And then finally is what's in between? What's in between? In this case, this clearly this gray tone is um, half tone, transition tone. There's lots of names for it, lots of functions. In this case, in this, to me, this is more of a transition tone because, again, it's a light colored object with a fairly strong high contrast light. Um, so all we really need to do is transition or move the eye or roll the eye from from the dark shadow into the light so we do need one more value shape to get there and um and that's really it that's really the essence of my entire <laughs> drawing philosophy i communicate these three shapes when i look at something i i, I scan like a computer i go Okay, what are the contour? What are the small shapes? What are their contours? What are the planes? What are the planes? Major plane, secondary plane. All right. And then what are the value shapes I have to describe? So all of these go into, into the computer. And then, I, and then that tells me, okay, I have three ways to communicate realism. I have contour. I have plane. And I have value shape. So the, to me, they're just they're just tools. They're just opportunities to to create what I want, which is the illusion of realism in a drawing. And um, real quickly before we, before we move on, I want to show you the. Um, if you notice, there's a relationship between plane and value. You guys see that? Those of you who um, who've been drawing for a while, you understand this that 
oftentimes value shapes uh, are shadow, sh are shadow, shadows are value shapes, right? They, they are a shadow because they're planes. They're planes that are turning away from the light. So we can see the eye, the brow is a plane, but it's also with, when, when lit from above, it becomes a shadow shape. And the side of the face, when lit from one side or from above, it becomes a shadow shape. You can see this little piece of thing is this little top plane of cheek is a shadow shape, a light shape, but it's also a top plane of the cheek. So there is a relationship between value and planes. Okay, let's look at a real world example. So this is um, from photography, obviously. If you're watching live, you can, uh, this reference will also be in the stream room chat. And um, let's examine our model here, our subject. I like this uh, tape. This tape is kind of fun. It's fun to tape things. <laughs> it's the little things in drawing. So much fun. Okay. All right. So we know contour. We all know this. Boom. Boom. Including hair in this case. I'm just doing it roughly here. So right away, when I look at something, I go, boom, what's the contour? What's the shape, silhouette? And then secondary shapes. All right, what are some important secondary shapes? Well, the face, obviously. Just her face separated from hair and details. So that'll be something like that. And then since her hair is such an important part of this composition let's let's shape that up let's see the contour of the hair and it has interesting little wobbly details the ear is a form has a contour uh, what else we know the eye has a contour the eyebrow uh, her nose has a contour Even on this side, it has a very subtle side plane. Her mouth has a specific contour, or lips in this case. So, all this stuff we know. Next is the plane, of course, we know. Boom, 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 boom. Once we have the contour, we know the plane, and we know that the most important plane is the side plane. And um, if you're new, uh, and maybe some of the planes aren't clear, like in this example, the uh, the side plane of the face, the cheek, is pretty clear because of our lighting. But if it's not so clear, one clue is the corner of the eyebrow. When the eyebrow starts to turn downward, that's a good place to estimate the plane. I mean, you could be wrong, you could be off a little bit, but it's a good start. When you do your lay-in, that's a good thing to aim for, is that corner of the eyebrow hair. Um, what else? So the whole eye socket is a plane. The eyes, right? The eyes are also little mini planes. I learned this from Hogarth and Loomis, all the great uh, illustrative teachers, the American illustrative tradition. The nose has a plane, top plane of the nose, under plane of the nose, side plane of the nose, the mouth. The lips are a plane. Lips are a plane. They have under plane. Lips also have front and side plane. They can be subdivided. The mouth itself has a front and a side. So we can, you know, we can, you can add 
planes whenever you want. Just to know they're there. They don't have to go in your drawing, but you know they're there. So that means if you need to describe it, you know roughly where it is. That, that, that helps. And even the neck has a plane, right? Every cylinder can be made of box. And there's a subtle line right here. I don't know if you guys can see it on the reference. But there's half tone, and then it goes to light. And rough, so it's a smooth gradient, right? But I'm going to estimate it roughly here. That's where my neck becomes a box. My cylinder, my neck becomes a box. So that's the plain language. And we know, of course, value plane. Value plane, very important. We can see. Clearly beautiful lighting as well. Clearly see the hair because her hair, local color of her hair is dark. Remember Marcus Agrippa? Uh, I don't know if his name was Marcus. Our friend Agrippa, right? His hair <laughs> is white, so it groups with the light. So that's, that's local value, local color. Her hair, Audrey Hepburn hair, our model here, her hair is dark, so it groups with the dark value shape. Very important there to account for local value, her dress, or her shirt, whatever. In this case, groups with local value. So that's our initial, what's really dark, what's really light. We got it right there. And then we have some smaller ones, and this is, this is something I do a lot when I draw, especially women, especially for poster art. Um, you know, most the for for that work, most of the women you draw will be the glamorous, beautiful Hollywood type women. So you need to make them beautiful, and one way to do that is to is to emphasize and accent their brow and their. Uh, Lashes, the, the upper lid, those are all dark and you could, you know, you could design them to make them look prettier, more beautiful, more glamorous, more sexy, whatever. And in this case, her nose becomes dark. Light shape, very obvious, right? She's also a local color, very light, light-skinned woman with a strong light, a strong exposure. So notice her skin groups very nicely. You can add separation. At the end, I'm looking at the reference here. Um, her nose has a really bright highlight. This part of her cheek has a bit of a bright highlight. And that's really it, the brightest highlights. Her eyes are really, really bright, the white of her eyes in this case. Um, but everything else groups with light shape. And then the transition tone, just like... Just like Agrippa, our old friend, transition tone to get from light to shadow in this case. To get from a dark shadow to a light local colored object in a bright light, we need transition tone. And we all know what that is right about here. These all group nicely. So that's really it. Even the lips, in this case, her lips, they're not quite as dark as the shadow. Um, she's wearing light colored lipstick in this case. But they also have planes. Remember, the lips are planes, and planes often cast shadow shapes. And there you go. So this is it. That's pretty much what I look at. Exactly what I look at. And um, obviously, um, we're, we're doing, in this case, we're doing, for this class, we're doing faces, and we're doing beautiful lighting. Uh, when the values, you know, every lighting situation is different, every model is different, right? If she had blonde hair, we would have much different discussion analysis, right? If she was uh, black or had dark skin, we would have much different conversation, of, you know, a different analysis, different strategy for the value shapes. Or if the lighting was very flat, you know, let's say there's two light sources or you pull the light back and you diffuse it and it becomes, you know, that flat kind of lighting. And we have another, again, different conversation.
So right now I, I got to, uh, make sure, <laughs> sure I can get this drawing in the picture in the, in the frame there. Her hair silhouette obviously is super important. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that um, if you're brand new and you just discovered me or you're watching this on replay, I have a, I have three whole playlists on shape observation. I have I have a whole playlist called How to See Shapes. It's about eight hours long right now, I believe. It's free on my YouTube channel. I made that for this reason, so I can ex so I explain how to see shape, <laughs> really. <laughs> so definitely check that out. That's free. It's on my YouTube channel now. About eight hours of free classes, and then I have one called um, Head Drawing Exercises that talks about planes and rhythms. So that's at least seven hours there. So definitely, um, if you're new and you haven't seen those, check those out. So I want to thank um, Manny f and uh, thank all the suggestions, but uh, uh, Manny brought up the idea of shape observation that's really what it is what what we're what i what i do is i uh, i make a 2d design based on my my observation of the two-dimensional shapes that i see and then um and then i try to develop it into a you know to the illusion of a three-dimensional Drawing, make it try to make it pop off the paper. That's that's really all I do. And then obviously it's got to have other things like style. Man, I don't know if you guys can see this drawing at all. Probably not, huh? It's way too light. Well, that's good. This is um, naturally. This is how I draw very light. Obviously. And I believe Verona asked a question about uh, drawing with line. So that's more of a technique breakdown. Uh, what I think she's referring to is, is hatching because, uh, um, and I'll talk about this as well today, is that um, obviously what we just did, the 2D breakdown is important, the outer breakdown, but eventually we need tones, right? We need tones to turn the form, to separate planes and things like that. And tones, like I said, can be made many ways. One way to make tones is with hatching, is with line. One way, and tones really are just filling a shape with a value, assigning a value, defining a shape and then assigning it a value to it. And then uh, you could fill that value shape any way you want to get the look you want, right? Obviously, uh, if you like me or if you like, you know, like illustrative art or poster art, uh, you know, you like to, you like to see the hatching because even the, you know, um, if you look at those academic drawings, the realistic ones, comment below if you've ever done a hardcore academic drawing, like a 20 or 200 hour one of those drawings. Even they uh, hatch uh, because you have to. When you, if you need to fill a space, a shape with a tone or a dark tone, especially. You have to hatch over and over and over again. You have to fill, I mean, you have to literally fill the holes in the paper as well. Um, 
um, so, so we'll talk about hatching a little bit here. Right now, I've got to define my shape. And I, I don't take this part lightly, you know, that's why I'm taking my time here. And I often know, I'll know at this stage whether a drawing will fail or succeed. A lot of times I, I, I can tell if I'm, if I'm on a good track right away. Right now I'm like, I'm like in the middle. I'm like halfway on track, halfway going to fail, but that's okay. I often, um, when I do these drawings on camera, they never, I'm never happy with them. It's, it's just, uh, it's difficult to, uh, to, it was difficult to draw and record yourself, in my opinion, and do a good drawing. Let's see. All right, this one's okay for now. It's okay, it's okay. Let me do some refining of my shape. There it is. And I'll probably use a pen. So here's an interesting design problem. Comment below. How would you guys handle her hair contour? Would you draw it like this? Lots of boxy straights like a Russian drawing? Box, 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 box. Would you draw it freestyle like this? Organic freestyle? Or would you try to be really precise? Okay, okay, there's a curve. There's a two millimeter curve. Oh, there's a 0.5 nanometer curve. Oh. Oh, there's a strand. I got to get that right. <laughs> because you know what? They're all correct. Why? Because this hair, actually you have a, what I call a large margin for error. The hair is so, uh, is so big and dark and nebulous. As long as it reads like big puffy hair, you'll get the likeness, which is important to me, but everything else. How you get to the shape it's up to you in this case. This is a case where you have interpret open to interpretation. So if you're following along, you don't have to draw like me. I think um, uh, I definitely would like to see your own interpretation of the subject. And um, if this is a little too advanced for you, I, um, I totally understand. This is not easy. Um, but, but do your best. If you uh, get really stuck, what I always recommend is uh, to just do a tracing, either in your digital or uh, with tracing paper like you saw me do, and analyze uh, the planes analyze the shapes, analyze the values. That's a good way to start. Okay, we talked about um, shape. Here's a little bit of technique breakdown. The um, We have a contour, right, of the face. And there's lots of ways to make lines and contours, right? Just like kind of what we saw in the Rembrandt last week, in the last live stream. 
right? We could do a contour like this. We could do a contour like this. <laughs> we could do a contour like this. Just like the Rembrandts. We can even do a contour like this. Oops. Like this. <laughs> Sorry. Right? Or we could do a little bit of all of those. And um, you may say, well, when would you do that? When would you do that? When would you do that? Well, it depends on the form and what you're trying to say. So, for example, in this hairline, right, I don't, the the edge or the 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 difference between this dark hair and her forehead is fairly sharp. Uh, I need it to feel fairly sharp because this isn't like her roots. Like here, notice here, I went like this. I didn't go like that, right? I went like this. You see the difference? They're both li lines, I guess. They're both contour lines. But one implies a difference in edge, texture, yada, yada, yada. So same here. As we go on this cheek, notice the jaw treatment. Notice the forehead treatment, the jaw. Now I'm going to do the cheek an even different way. I've got to move my paper. This is another fun thing about paper drawing. I just love spinning my paper. I don't know why. I just love it. It's so much fun to do this. <laughs> spin the oops. Spin the paper around. Okay. See that's slightly different and then the Watch, watch, this is important. Uh, make sure you guys can see this. Ah, i try to get this on f f camera here. So this is important too. So we have a cast shadow. Again, we could do the cast shadow like that. That's totally valid. But we can also add a little bit of flavor. I could even do this, da, 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 da. just for fun. You see that? <laughs> just break it up. Why? Because it's a cast shadow. I have margin of error. I don't need to be precise like the hair. Um, and it's, it's just cool. It's fun. It's cool. Whatever. Anyway, that's something something to think about. Okay. See, now I'm going to go into these precise shapes. So here, my margin of error is very low, especially with a pen. So I basically have zero margin of error. If I make a mistake here, I'm, I'm screwed, right? We, we've all been here. It's going to be almost impossible to, to correct my mistake. So I'm, I'm going to be careful here. I'm, I'm going to not talk so much. So uh, here we go.
If you're watching uh, on replays, a lot of silence, I know, but this part, like I said, I, uh, I, have, I need full concentration here. This, this is... Uh, This is the part where I can't mess up. Oh, Shh. I just noticed I drew the nose too low. Dang it. Whoops. This shape is, is too, it's too low. Whoopsie. It's okay. Okay. The uh, stressful part is over. How'd you guys do if you're watching, if you're drawing along with me? Ooh wee. Ooh wee. So, um, as you can see, it already starting to read, right? Because, well, A, the, the original has that beautiful graphic quality. Um, but my major shapes are reading, even have some plane definition. That's a plane. That's a that's a plane. So a lot of things are working here. We can see. Um, remember the side plane of the face. That's what that shadow is. The planes of the lips, underplane of the nose, the eyes, the plane. Uh, my contour. The hair is a shape and a contour. The face is a value shape and a contour. The eyebrow is a value shape and a contour. Right. The eyes. Remember, I said even the eyes have shape. In this case, I, I suggested the shape of the globe right the ball of the eye and also defined the shadow shape which is this is basically uh it's the illustrative way to draw an eye it's the poster artist way if you look at uh, any of the great american illustrators cornwell lion decker rockwell drew struzand <laughs> They all draw eyes like this. <laughs> They're basically graphic patterns with the illusion. And then you add tone to make it feel three dimensional. It's, it's a very, very fun way to draw, in my opinion. Erase that a little bit. Let me take a picture for the Graham. Comment below if you like to see these process drawings. Everybody loves this part of it. All right. So now let's talk about filling the shape. So we got to separate the value, right? And this is probably kind of answers um, Ro, Ro Ro's question or comment. How do you make the drawing with just line? So we have a dark shape. We all know we need to fill these dark shapes, right? And you know, you know I'm going to do it. You've seen me draw... <laughs> 
So how can we do it? How, how do we get there, right? We have a shape. Da, 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 da. Right? Obviously, we could just manually fill it with hatching. Do, 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 do. We could do it that way. We could do it cross hatching. Right? We could do it with super dark and just, you know, just fill it and go over it until until there's no holes in the paper. Basically try to cover every square inch, every hole in the paper. This is how this is exactly how the academic artists get their beautiful rich dark tones. So how you get there is totally up to you. Obviously you you guys see me do this a lot. This is totally a stylistic choice. I do it because it's fun and it looks cool. That's basically why I do it. If you notice some of my more professional work, I, I hide this. Uh, let me go back to... Uh, right, so this would be something I would do for client work. It's it's there, but but I hide it. You know, I don't make it as bold as my sketchbook drawings, as obvious, the, ch -ch 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 -ch, the hatching. See, it's also here. It's here because... You know, this lighting isn't the high contrast lighting we're drawing now. This is more, more natural lighting, ambient lighting. But the hatching is still there. There's still value shapes. I still had to fill them. But you, you don't see this. It's still hatching. You know, it's still, it's still that. But, but I, I don't make it as obvious. And it's there. If you zoom in and look closely, you, you'll see it. So I'm just going to set, fill it with a tone. And this motion is, is totally arbitrary. What I'm doing now, you could do it any way you want. But obviously, it, it still makes a nice dark, right? Because it's pen, it's ink, it's dark. So it does the job. It makes the tone, it makes it a dark tone. And it also shows some... Technique shows some, some, some artistry, right? Some craftsmanship in the, in it. We can all see that. So now we're going to do the hair. I can go a couple ways now. I could, I could bring, bring the dark shape to a dark black. I can begin the transition tone. I could just block in a light half tone for her skin, or I can um, I could take one area to a finish, which is called window shading. For example, I just take this eye and take it as far as I can go, and then compare everything else. So many ways to go. Right now, what I want to do is uh, do the transition tone first, and then we'll figure out what what's next. So basically, I'm filling in the value shape that, that uh, I talked about. Remember this? Right? We have a similar light pattern, a dark thing, a light face and light, and a transition tone. So that's what I'm doing here, this transition tone. It's the tone that's between light and shadow. Right now, her face groups nicely with light. She's a light-skinned model uh, with a strong uh, light. So her skin be becomes very bright, especially relative to the light, to the shadow.
this area right here, right, on her cheek. There's so many ways to interpret that. Is it a plane? Yes. Is it a value shape? Yes. Is it a form? Yes. Does it have edge? Yes. So I could interpret it as value shape, right? I can literally outline it like that. That's, I'm, that's not going to do that. <laughs> uh, although I could make a lighter outline and just fill it in. That's what I see. Basically. I see a little chunky halftone shape. And then uh, this transition tone, it looks like I'm f modeling form, but what I'm doing is there's a shape here. There's a shape of halftone, transition tone, really. Transition tone is the tone that's between shadow and halftone. Uh, there's also... little tiny value shape there between the dark brow and the forehead. So I'm going to hide some of the that vertical hatching I just did. I want more of that soft modeled look. A little bit, a little bit soft look. Mm, let's see where am I at here? Okay, um, so that's pretty much all the transition tones that I have. There's some subtle light half tones here and here, which I'm not going to address yet. What I would like to do is make this whole thing dark because I need to see how dark I'm going to go before I do these subtle light half tones. That'll give me a better idea of, uh, you know, how dark I can go if these half tones are too dark, too light. It'll help me evaluate the whole value structure. All right. Thank you for the questions and comments. I'm going to fill in the dark now. And uh, Bic also asked about the client work. I normally, I don't do those in pen uh, because uh, <laughs> I wouldn't use pen at all because I need to, um, the margin of error is, is very low. So I have to be able to erase and things like that. Obviously, it's so I would, I would do everything you're watching here, except in mostly in this pencil, colored pencil, black very thin
So in a lot of ways, this is still hatching. Except, um, right, with a pencil, with a pencil, you can use the point, the heel, or the side. You know what I mean? You could hatch this way. You could hatch with the heel. Or you can hatch with the side. It's all... It's the, to me, hatching is the motion. The motion. I would call this more tone drawing. This lit line drawing. So this is tone line, but it's still... The motion is the same. Shup, 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 shup. That's why I miss about art stores. Comment below if you have a good art store in your neighborhood. Man, I used to have so many. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to fill in. What I need is a black. I need to see how dark I can go. So I'm going to use the blackest thing that I have right now is a Prismacolor black. It's much softer than a very thin, which is what I did before. You see how it goes really, really black. So that's as dark as I can go. So now I have a really nice... Okay, see now, now that I see the dark, I go, okay, I can better judge the halftone. Because I really want to get to the, the light, but I need to set it up first. To make sure that I'm in a good position to get there. So good value control here. This is... Uh, Again, another another method from academic drawing where you uh, establish full value range to give yourself a, a nice uh, a nice clear uh, picture to help you control your values. See, once I add the black, I know, okay, the white of her eyes really isn't that bright. It looks hella bright, but it's not. Same as this. See, I know I can go darker here. You see that? I know I can go darker here. See, now her eyes start to sit. And I need, that's why I needed that to go black. This eye shape's a little wonky. Probably lots of wonky things. Typically, I would, um, if I'm drawing, um, when I'm not on camera, I typically, uh, I stand up a lot. So I'm at a drawing table now. So I would, I would take a break and stand up and look at it from 20 feet away. Or uh, what is that? Five meters away, eight meters, something like that. Five meters? Ten meters away? I don't know. Oh, I need this edge too, just to see. And then I need this dark here. Her hair gets really, really dark. Yeah, I normally, I take lots of breaks and stand up and look at it from a distance so I can check my errors, look for a mirror. I do that uh, quite a bit. In fact, I prefer to draw standing up, actually. I prefer to draw at a stand-up easel. But for these smaller little drawings, it's, uh, it's more convenient to sit down. I don't have a proper uh, art studio yet, anyway. 
yeah, I can sense there's lots of errors and things. I don't know. Okay, it's time to do the half tone. Now, clearly, mark making, right? Uh, um, I could do this, this, or this. Use the point, the heel, or the side. Now, because it's a beautiful woman and pretty light, I'm probably not going to do this. I'm going to do a lot of this because this is has a softer feel, obviously. So that's right. I'm going to go with the side, not the point. But the again, the motion is still the same. And I know what some of you are, might be thinking. You're thinking, Chris, should I go along with the form or go this way against the form? Hmm. That is the age old question. Along with the form, against the form. Because they're both valid. And we need to do both in a lot of ways. Oh, nice. This half tone is starting to read nicely now. So one thing that might be helpful is that um, like we said, there's many ways to define the plane, but um, Another way to think of this is um, the value shapes. See, for example, from like this whole area you saw me just do, right? This is a shape. This whole area is a shape. And that little bit of highlight that I left on the chin, that's also a shape. So it's, it's the ability to analyze the shapes of value when they're close together. That's, that's, uh, that's something I'm still working on, but that's will help you get more of that realism. Is to understand that every every uh, thing has a value shape to it. So instead of just trying to copy the tones, analyze what the shape looks like, the the boundary of the tone, because the tone will have a boundary. So right now there's a a highlight shape here or a lighter light shape. So I'm going to possibly leave that. Leave that as it is. You see, just leave it alone and put some tone underneath it. This is a whole, this whole passage is a shape. So I'm going to put some tone there just to bring it into the light half tone. But there's also a passage that goes this way, right? There's a form of the cheek. So I could do a little bit there just to see where I'm at. So all of this is about observation training, which is why um, I made that whole playlist on observation. Definitely check that out. And if you study um, old masters, you'll see this exact thing. And you'll see that they, 
One thing, if you study about the old realist masters, you'll see they do the same thing. They all kind of do the same thing. They all break things down into shapes and contours. They all define planes. They all organize their values. You'll see that the Rembrandts, the Sargents, Caravaggio's, Velasquez, Vermeer, all the greats that we admire, they all organize values. So it's um, it becomes a design problem. That's what I'm doing here. I'm really thinking about design of value shape. How dark should it be? Is the shape right? And then, of course, it's boundary. What kind of treatment or edge or whatever I put around its contour is boundary. And then technique-wise, what kind of look and feel do I want? Do I want kind of a soft, feminine kind of feel? Soft and beautiful and feminine. Do I want like aggressive feeling, right? If I was drawing like that Billy Butcher, that one character I showed in the beginning, you know, he, you know, he would get a much different treatment than this uh, beautiful Hollywood actress. Or if I was drawing like, uh, uh, let's say it's a beautiful female, but she's like a, like a, um, like a, like a vampire character or something, or she's a serial killer or something, right? You know, maybe I would treat her drawing differently, technique wise. I would, you know, show more of the hatching. I would show more of the planes. I would use more straights. Things like that to think of. Those are all design choices, really. How you do it is it's all valid. No matter how you choose to fill the shape, to hatch, to side a pencil, to stippling, airbrush, how you do it is it, it's all it's all valid. It all works. In my mind, the important thing is the storytelling the narrative quality, the emotional quality you get. And that comes from good design choices. So right now I'm getting to a point where I could totally screw it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm, now I'm going to take a break. I have to, right now this drawing is about 12 inches from my face, which is a horrible place to draw. Yeah, I, you know, we, we've all been there. Um, but now I, I, have, I have to step back because right now I still have some margin for error. I can still make a mistake and recover. But very, very soon, uh, my margin error will go away or get smaller and smaller, even though I'm using a pencil. This is a semi-permanent pencil, meaning this pencil will not erase fully. And, um, you know, also, I, I just don't want to... The look I want is soft and elegant. So the more I make a mistake in a race, make a mistake in a race, it's just going to, you know, destroy... That, that a la prima quality of a drawing. Okay, let's take a quick break and step away. All right, so, wow, we've been streaming for a long time. So I, um, I feel pretty good about this. I think I'm at a good stopping point here. Um, I, I, took, I took a step back and I saw that um, this black needs to go black. This whole hair shape and shadow shape is too light. It needs to go darker to get the full effect. So do I go this way? Do a cross hatch? I probably will have to just to fill the holes in the paper. That's what needs to be done. And I need a darker pencil. That's really about it. And I'm going to make those decisions off camera because I'm going to... Um, I need I need concentration. This is why I like to draw in silence. Because um, if I draw in silence, um, ideas come easier you know what i mean inspiration comes 
versus if I'm listening to music or watching a TV show or something. Uh, you know, part of my part of my thinking, my my brain activities is diverted. All right, so that's about wrap it up. Um, what I'm going to do is finish this up off camera, and then you'll see um, on the replay, you'll see the finished drawing. So thank you so much, and I will see you in the next live stream.